Today is October 28th, 2021. This week at Bungie, we're replacing the flawless pool. We're about to hit the fever pitch of spookiness. Ghosts are around every corner, and we don't mean the friendly type that revives you after taking too much damage. Sadly, this means that it's almost time to start packing up the tower and decorations and saying goodbye to Evil Levante. It's the final week of Festival of the Lost. You have until the reset on Tuesday, November 2nd to finish your books. Eat your candy and wrap up any unfinished business you have with the event. We've recently fixed some issues with candy and spectral pages drops from public events and trials of Osiris. So if you're jamming out some pages to finish your book, don't sleep on these activities. Throw on a mask, eat some candy, and earn some rewards. While you're extracting whatever loot you can from the Headless Ones, Trials of Osiris will also start up tomorrow and run until Festival of the Lost ends at reset as usual. We got a fix in so you wait, so you still earn pa pages even if you lose a match. And and that is not all we are changing. Trials and matchmaking changes. The last few weekends of Trials of Osiris have been a have wait have been a bit quieter in some changes in terms of changes. This was by design. We wanted to give players a few weekends of steady play before making any more significant changes or testing out another Trials Lad weekend. This gave our team some great data for how the trials pages are going, how players are engaging with the activity and what we could prioritize changing in the future. A quick recap of stasis from the last few weeks uh, shows everything to be steady too. Oh wait. A quick recap of stats from the last few weeks shows everything to be steady to. Matchmaking times are consistent with past weeks. Blowout rates drop slightly week after week. This is consistent with lower skilled players not playing as much. Average hours played per player remains consistent across skill levels. Overall player count went down each week, but that is expected during the portion of this season and is consistent with past trials and Iron Banner performance. We still don't see any evidence of widespread flawless card resets to avoid the flawless pool. What's less than 0.5% of cards played were reset while still flawless and above three wins. Even still, the impetus to do wait to do this should be removed starting this week. More on that below. Now we look to freelance. Last weekend we gave our players a strictly solo queue option for trials. We entered the weekend with some assumptions on how the population could split what might happen to matchmaking times, and a few questions on how to offer freelance options in the future. Here's a quick recap from the team on how things went, what we learned, and what we're thinking about for the future. Freelance. So this past week, we opened the freelance queue so that solo players could consistently play against each other groups of solos. How'd that feel? We had over a million games played each in each playlist this weekend, with slightly more play games played in the base trials of Osiris playlist. Average hours played for the lower skilled players is up quite a bit over the past weeks with the average to top in has almost the same hours played interestingly 
players who played in a fire team some of the time and solo some of the time played almost three times as long this weekend as players who either played exclusively solo or in a fire team uh, and then they show a graph uh, average Charles games played per player uh, week one two three four five and six um, doesn't look like it's dipped that far I'm guessing is this is this like in the millions or oh wait like overall games okay yeah 40 okay it's not that bad of a dip I haven't played for the past couple of weeks but that's because I haven't been paying attention to weapons uh, player numbers 244,000 freelance exclusive players 120,000 fire team exclusive players 220,000 played both solo and in a fire team 25.5% of players went flawless lower than any revamp week likely fallout of matches being fair uh, if it doesn't drop below 20% for a weekend, the lighthouse should still feel attainable. Average matchmaking times were consistently around 50 seconds for full fire teams and solos, and regularly were about 100 seconds for duos. The Sunday Flawless Pool adds about 10 seconds to flawless player matchmaking and we are seeing some worrying spikes in matchmaking times for some of the smaller sub pools post flawless pool split I, I i still don't understand the flawless pool i don't like okay i get the flawless player pool but i don't agree with it because like at the end of the day we don't want to be farmed by people who do nothing but farm flawless like the average player once they get flawless like they don't want to play anymore because especially once the flawless pool becomes a thing um overall blowout rate games that ended with a score of 5-0 was almost as low as our best post revamp week when a false pool went active friday afternoon at 27.8 percent this was powered by a significant number of fire team versus fire team matches and solos versus solar matches both of which had 25 percent blowout rates and as you can see the graph right here. And then they give a percentage of match outcomes this week, freelance versus base. Uh, let's go next. One thing we aren't happy with is the team balance. We've noticed that how the solo players isn't doing a great job balancing two teams when they aren't any fire team match matches. Oh, damn it, I keep on hitting my mic. I'm sorry, I'm gonna move it. A little too close. I lost my place. Oh, mismatches. For trials, it's currently just picking teams randomly. We are going to look very carefully at how teams are selected over the next few weeks and hopefully have a better balance next time freelance rolls around. This is one of the downsides of not using skill based matchmaking in trials in situations where skills would be helpful to balance two teams of solo players it isn't even a data point in the system can look at speaking of which freelance features we like the overall outcome and vibe of the freelance queue and both playlists seem to have a visible viable amount of players we are looking at running freelance occasionally for the remainder of the season 15, but are still trying to determine what feels right. We will let you know. Long term, 
We are exploring some single playlist solutions, preferential matchmaking of full fire teams against other full fire teams, duo plus solo against other duo plus solo. We don't have a specific release target yet for this year, but it will not be, but it will not be prior to season 16. Okay. Now we got the flawless pull changes. Flawless pull, which we have been enabling Sunday at reset time, has very positive benefits. It raises overall match quality, blowout rates, etc. significantly, and it raises overall rates of solo players. However, it has some drastic downsides. For players who struggle and manage to just barely go flawless, it is a steep cliff to then only play against players who have already gone flawless that week. I was just saying that. It always it also incentivizes behavior that at odds with the mode and reward system, like resetting a flawless six wins ticket to keep getting easier matches, but worse rewards. It also creates social friction where players need to decide between playing with friends or playing for rewards. Lastly, the timing. To name specific on Sundays is awkward for you uh, if you live anywhere out but the Americas. Starting tomorrow, we are rolling out a new system and leaning into quick weekly performance metrics. Whenever you match in trials, in addition to trying to match with people with the same number of card wins, you will also attempt to match with people who have roughly the same number of overall wins for the weekend. If you can't find anyone to match against, it will eventually expand out and find you less similar match. For the people, or for the PvP gods who go flawless 10 times a weekend, we will end up matching with other players who have, for example, 70 plus wins were on their card. No matter how they got them, for average team who get lucky flawless on Friday or Saturday on their first card, well, they will be matching against players with around seven wins, no matter how they got them. So whether or not you went flawless or not, if you got seven wins on your card, whether or not you reset or not, you'll be playing against people who got that amount of wins. That works. We are hoping this will give us many of the benefits of the flawless pool system, somewhat fairer matches without a significant downside. Specifically, there should be no major inf inflection point where everything is smooth prior to a win. And then anything is overly challenging after. While this allows us to remove the flawless pool, it does not have, wait, it does have a potential downside. Longer matchmaking times. We think there is a reasonable trade-off here between match quality and matchmaking time. Average trials, matchmaking times currently sit around 50 seconds. Over the next few weekends, we are going to look at how much matchmaking times goes up and how, match it, how it affects the match quality. The outcome of the previous non-labs week were, and then, you know, get a whole bunch of numbers here. You can read them on your own. In an ideal world, we want to get each of those numbers to a close 20% as possible, but we would rather see more 5, 4, 5, 3 outcomes than 5, 0, 5, 1. As always, we are going to be listening closely to your feedback, as well as looking at it, aggregating stats to continue tuning matchmaking for trials to strive for the best experience possible. Plus one. It's been a minute since we've had a pleasure of introducing new community manager at Alas, that time has come. We are expanding our team to have a new CM community manager joining our ranks. Please give a warm welcome to Lena, aka Hippie. Oh, Liana. 
Diana, aka Hippie. It, is this like a? What is this link to? This is like a Twitter page or something. Oh, yep, there it is. There it is. Our new community manager. I wonder if she's a JoJo's fan. And uh, speaking in the voice of Hippie, greetings, Guardians. What? Greetings, Guardians. To say I'm excited to be here would be a massive understatement. My love for Bungie started long before the game, before we became Guardians, back in the pathway into darkness days. It grew with Marathon, then Myth, Oni, and of course, Halo and Destiny. The evolution of shooters, the humble Chicago beginnings, and the growth seen since then is inspiring. And to be part of it, life changing. I'm so excited to be here and a part of the studio that has accomplished so much in the past 30 years. Especially with how Destiny 2 has grown since its release. I'm not alone in being just a little bit in love with my guardian, and I can't wait to continue the adventure alongside you all. As recently converted Titan main, sorry, Titan dries up. I'm right here in the trenches with the best of them. From fighting off cabal hordes and a f wait. And to feeling conflicted about taking out Fallen after being after seeing how freakishly cute they are. As little balls of adorableness. Every week is a new adventure in Destiny 2. As this experience continues to evolve into something truly special, I look forward to tra tackling the challenges, the triumphs, and those frustrating as heck as uh, first raids runs with the rest of the community and the amazing passionate team here. I also can't wait to share some pretty impressive war stories with you all, even if jumping puzzles are still the bane of my existence. This is why we have Lion Rampants. Before you ask, no, DMJ are not going anywhere. Oh wait, no, this is DMG. Uh, before you ask, no, DMG and I are not going anywhere. We'll be helping Hippie learn the ropes and get settled in the, wait, in the months to come. So be nice and don't overwhelm her with questions right off the gate. I like how he said that and he linked her Twitter page on the TWAV. Well, why would you say that and link her? Like you, you're just gonna, you asked for you asking for it, buddy. Anyway, uh, we got scary costumes and punking pages. Last week, we put out a call for you to show off your spookiness fashion and Carve up your most creative pumpkins and Festival of the Lost related artwork. We've been away by, we've been blown away by a number of amazing entries and wanted to showcase some ones that have caught our eyes so far. Oh, this guy basically looks like a Vex, nice. Is this like an Among Us picture? Hmm. Wait. This guy's a hunter, though. Why are you? It's red. It's red. Why are you point, bro? This is a hunter. Why are you pointing at blue? <laughs> this is okay. Anyway, moving on. Boss sector pumpkin. Who is this? Best Park poster for creation. Nice. All right. We're not done yet. We will be sharing more winners all the way up to the big day, October 31st. 
uh, more root vegetables. We deployed an update earlier today. Let's check out the DPS to see how it went and known issues that are still lingering. This is their report. Rutabaga error increase. Recently, an exploit was discovered that allowed players to generate more orbs of power than intended when triggering certain supers to prevent, to prevent exploitation of this issue until a fix can be deployed later this year. Players who experience extreme sustained frame rate issues in PvP environments may now encounter more frequent rutabaga errors. Some of these errors can be mitigated by not tabbing or changing your video settings during matchmaking. That's a PC issue. Um, players who encounter rutabaga errors while participating in PvP for reasons other than reducing the orb generation issue should report the details of what they are doing uh, to de dedicate uh, to our dedicated help form threads. Hotfix 3.3.1.2. Earlier today, Hotfix, I just read it, was released to the world. This Hotfix resolves several issues, including many Screebs will no longer sink below the ground in the Grandmaster Hollow Lair of Nightfall. It's a little bit too late for that. But thank you. Exploits for Telesso and Raiju's Harness have been fixed. These exotics have now been re-enabled in all activities. Waiting for the next one, Telesso. Year one faction raids and trials armor ornaments not correctly list class specific synth weaves as unlock options in the appearance screen. Final week of Festival of the Lost. Festival of the Lost concludes at the weekly reset on November 2nd, and players should ensure that they turn their collected candy for rewards. Redeem all manifested pages and collect all available trans before it ends. Players should also keep in mind that player level and masquerader's helmet will return to zero after the conclusion of the event. We should make sure to unequip it prior to attempting to participate in high level content to ensure they meet entry requirements. Uh, more known issues. While we continue investigating various known issues, here are a list of latest issues we are reporting uh, to our help form. Uh, Submachinist metal only appears after eliminating three players without dying instead of two, specified. The emblem of PvP of Trials Match incorrectly displays as the observing player's emblem. Plan of Triumph may not be unlocking as intended. We are enough Triumph doesn't unlock for players who complete Override Last City. A small arrow is following falling hunters around when wearing certain pieces of gear. Players on Steam are experiencing less larger than usual FPS drops in the tower, in orbit, and when viewing the roster. Club. The Relic Orb may not spawn in Corrupted Strike when fighting Sedia. That's going to suck for this week. Uh, for a full list of emergent issues in Destiny 2, players can review our known issues articles. Players who observe other issues should report them to our help form. Uh, we've got some more movie of the month. Looks like a Marvel movie of the month. Uh, Blair Witch Queen uh, Artist of the Week got some pretty neat art here. You can find them on Twitter Are these baby baby fallen look at them All right for the wrap-up With festival of the loss coming to a close we are nearing the end of scheduled seasonal beats for a bit so it's time for free play next week. Saladin will be hosting the Iron Banner. So mark that on your calendars. If you need some quick pinnacle jobs or want to hunt some rolls on your banner weapons. After Iron Banner next week, we still have trials going uh, throughout November. 
with new matchmaking changes mentioned in this swap. We can also, wait, you can also this time catch up on some catalysts, knock out some triumphs, or finish anything else. Taking up space in your quest log. We have some fun stuff planned for our 30th anniversary in December. It's going to be a great time to play some Destiny. Love, Cosmo. All right, so that's our uh, weekly breakdown of this week at Bungie. If you like the video, drop me a like, comment uh, on anything that you want to have further discussions on in the comment section below. This has been The Cell Games. Have a good day.